Good morning, everyone. Um, I know that some of you <laughs> joined me on my Facebook page, the healing page, just two seconds ago, which is why we're a little late starting this morning here, but that's okay. So for those of you who weren't able to, to join us on the healing page, um, uh, go to the healing page and find out all about the healing minute and how you can be a part of our team for our healing minute. All right, to, today's subject is mind over matter, mind over body. But before we do that, I would like to say, first of all, good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who is, as always, standing to my right. I'd like to say good morning to Carolyn, who is always to my far right. Say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning. And we have a guest this morning. Now, we had a guest last week, and we've got a guest this week. This could be a regular thing. And so, <coughs> our guest this morning... <coughs> Excuse me. I guess this morning is Peggy. Now, some of us, some of you, as you've been joining us for these live shows, have probably seen Peggy writing in questions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it just so happens, and, and I didn't realize this until a little while ago. But it just so happens that Peggy lives just down the road. Don't you wish that you just lived down the road so you could pop in and join us for these YouTube sessions? Peggy, good morning. Good morning. Are you enjoying yourself so far? I am. I'm having a lot of fun. Good. Well, she's having a lot of fun, but in a minute I'm going to bring her on camera and then she's, she's, already, she's already turning her nose up at that idea. All right. Let's come back to the subject. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a few questions, but before we get into the subject problem, I'm going to tell you a little story because this story illustrates... Um, what what it is what the subject is today it illustrates how using our mind and using the magic of love we can actually affect uh, what's going on with us there there are so many people we have emailing us all the time who are saying you know i'm sick or i'm depressed or whatever for whatever reason they're saying different things and um and and uh, you know what can we do to help ourselves well here we go with today's subject all right so the story is about a little girl and i'm ashamed to tell you that i've forgotten her name but she was my patient a patient of mine for a couple of years she was uh i think seven years old seven or eight years old when she first was brought to me by her parents okay. and um this little girl and those of my healers who are watching and those of my friends and healers in England who are watching, I know are going to remember this story very fondly. Okay, so this little girl was brought to us, and uh, it was a, a strange thing because she came holding the hands of her parents. She was between her two parents, but she was hopping on one leg. And the story turns out that she could not use her left leg i think it was her left leg okay she couldn't use her left leg she'd been for tests she'd been to the hospital she'd been everywhere she'd been to see specialists and over a period of i think a couple of years um this had been going on uh the doctors tried everything did all sorts of things tried to help her to use this leg um, and uh, generally she had the best help and the best care of the medical profession. And in the end, because she hadn't been able to use this leg, she couldn't put her foot down on the ground, because she hadn't been able to use this leg, the leg had started to, the muscles had started to atrophy. Uh, her leg began shrinking and, and getting uh, smaller. Basically, it was beginning to wizen away. I mean, that, you know, that's what was happening <clears throat> and you could see her, the foot size on the left leg was much smaller she had to have you know two pairs of shoes one to fit the right uh, foot one to fit the left foot because her foot had started to shrink a little bit um, and you could see she had no calf muscle on this leg it was just like a thin stick whereas the other leg was quite you know muscled and so on all right so so now 
two years later the doctors can't do anything about it they're seeing the leg is beginning to the muscles are beginning to atrophy they are worried now that all sorts of other problems could occur and the only solution now was to amputate the leg now to amputate the leg of a seven-year-old little girl is like that's huge it's a you know it's a huge uh, thing nobody wants to do that of course it happens it happens all the time but in this particular case these parents were just desperate and they didn't know what to do and they'd heard about me and they'd heard about my healing center which at the time this particular healing center was in scunthorpe in uh <coughs> excuse me <coughs> in the north of england and uh so you know it was a steel mining town it was a you know very ordinary people would come to this healing center and we we had lots of patients some weeks we'd have you know up to 30 patients some weeks we might have more and of course some weeks we had less but it was a, a, a quite a thriving healing center and when i say thriving i don't mean financially thriving because we don't charge for healing and we've never charged for healing we've always accepted donations if people want to give them but we never charge for healing so along come this couple with this little girl and the father is desperate he does not want his daughter to have a leg amputated so they bring her to see me to see if we can do anything and as healers we never promise never we never make promises that we can do anything what we do is we make a promise to do our best and to try our best and to give of ourselves whatever it is we can so every week this little girl will come to to us for healing <coughs> excuse me so it just so happens that i'm quite good with kids and uh, i like kids and so you know i'm able to relate to them and to communicate with them and this little girl was very shy and she was very worried of course she was about to have a leg amputated and she was a bit frightened about that and so i just would sit and talk with her I'd lay her on the bed and we'd just sit and talk i'm a great believer in magic and when i'm talking with kids whether it's just telling a story or whether it's dealing with them for more serious reasons for health reasons or whatever i believe in using the power of magic and the power of magic as when as we're healing is really the power of love because love can be magical now during our healing sessions i like to use when i'm giving healing i like to use um energy uh, the energy of different colors and that's a whole subject for another time but different colors if you visualize different colors those the energy of these different colors can be very very powerful and can also be very very effective for instance if i have a patient who is agitated and upset and and depressed and so on i would always use the color green and visualize the color green because the the, the energy of the color green is sort of a calming and an easy energy that can wash over a patient and help to create a calming effect there's much more to that subject back to our little girl so I wanted to give this little girl some visuals because I believe that when we're dealing with the, our body our, our mind power and our body when we use visuals visuals are extremely helpful extremely helpful and this is how you every one of us can and help ourselves when we're sick even if it's just that we think we've got a bit of the flu or a bit of pneumonia still you can hear it there or or if uh, the, you know we have health issues that are more serious when we visualize and we use visualization techniques and we use the visualization of color it can be very powerful and it can be very very helpful to us so I decided that uh, this little girl needed some visuals because after all she's only seven years old right so I needed to help her to deal with what was going on and to first of all not to be afraid and also I wanted to give her hope I didn't want to give her false hope but I didn't want to take hope away from her either so I devised this little thing and I made her a little brooch with different colored ribbons 
I had blue ribbons and green ribbons and and uh, yellow ribbons and orange ribbons and I made put them all on a little pin and I gave this pin to her and I said this is your healing brooch this is your magic and it's called the magic of love and I gave her some exercises that she that I wanted her to try to do and I said to her when you go to bed at night I want you to pin this little brooch somewhere on your bed where you can see it if you wake up and you get frightened and I'd like you to wear the this little brooch as much as she can well as much as you can well she apparently wore it all the time and whenever she was feeling nervous or worried or if she was trying one of my exercises she would hold her hand on the brooch and therefore visualize these different colors now what has this got to do with this child's leg the muscles are atrophying they're going to be they're going to be you know amputating a leg you know what am i doing what am i doing as a healer well, what i am doing what i tried to do with this little girl was i tried to create in her the mind power that we all have and i tried to help her to use it in a very positive way I know you can walk, but you have to believe that you can walk. I know that you're going to be fine, but you have to believe that you're going to be fine. So over the period of the next several months or so, we began to see some improvements with this little girl who began to actually start to put her toes down on the floor as she was walking. So she wasn't quite hopping anymore. She was sort of hobbling. Then unfortunately, I went away. I, was, uh, I went to Hong Kong and I was away for six weeks. And all that progress that we'd made with this little girl just seemed to just go out of the window. And I had this frantic message a week before I was coming home, due to come home, <coughs> that this little girl had, it, it, she was right back to where she was. She couldn't put her foot down. She couldn't do this, she couldn't do that, et cetera, et cetera. Mind power. Mind power can be positive, mind power can be negative. And I think that this little girl associated all of this with me personally, because we are by this time had built up a great relationship. And um, then I wasn't there. And it was almost as if, even though she knew I was coming back, it must have felt to her, again, the mind tells you I've been abandoned she felt abandoned and so she'd begun to go downhill so uh, a couple of weeks later i was back at the healing center and she was back again and yes we did have to start all over again but she's seven years old so you know almost eight by this time seven years old and that's okay sometimes healing takes patience sometimes healing uh takes a, a lot of work and um you know, this little girl, we used her ribbons and we sang the rainbow song because those of you who know me well know that I love the rainbow song. I teach my grandson the rainbow song because the rainbow song is all about color and energy and power. So I think, you know, again, if you're looking for a way to help yourself, if you're sick, if you have health issues, I would say to you, learn the rainbow song. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to learn the rainbow song. So we sang the rainbow song. She had her brooch of ribbons. She had all the tools that I could give her. Now the only thing she had to do was to get it into her head, into her mind, that she, she could affect this, that she had the power if she wanted it, and she could use that power. Cutting a long story short, several months went by. It was very funny because unbeknownst to me, I was not aware of all of the other patients who every time this little girl came out of my room and walked into the main, uh, the main hall where my patients were, <coughs> all the other patients would look. They'd look at her leg, they'd look at her, they'd see how she was doing. And then, yes, one day, finally, uh, she came out of my room and she was walking, foot firmly on the ground and walking, and now it was time to give her exercises. But as she walked out uh, of my room and into the tea room, 
all the patients stood up and they all applauded her and I think every single patient there was as thrilled as my team and I were that this little girl was cured. She was running, she rode a bike, she was a swimmer and she eventually went on to a TV show because you know it was a big fancy TV show because people had heard about this miracle child with this little miracle of love that had helped her and saved her leg. Of course, I'd love to tell you that my team and I got so many accolades and we got huge news coverage and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we weren't mentioned at all. But that's okay, because as healers, we don't do it for the accolades be nice to have them but we don't do it for the accolades we do it for the joy of it and we do it because that's what we do that's what we decide to do so that little girl is probably I'm going to say probably 30 years old now she might be a little older maybe she remembers I think she does maybe she remembers us I'm pretty sure she remembers me uh, I'd like to think she remembers my team, but whether or not she does, we remember her. Mind over matter, encouraging people to use their mind and their mind energy. That is part of what healing is about, and it works. It really works. Do we have, we have any questions? Do we have we any do. comments? We, we have a couple of Comments and, and questions. Okay, let's go. Comments. Let's see. We've got a Sammy and Alina watching. And they're, Hello, they're Sammy and Alina. That, Hello. Uh, you're beautiful. You look beautiful today. Oh, how nice. All right. And then we've Such got... flattery. There I am saying, nobody gives us accolades, and then I get two gorgeous accolades. Thank you, darlings. <laughs> and then we've got Joyce. Uh, she's here. Hello, Joyce. You gave her healing on the uh, healing page. Oh, 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 good. How is she feeling? Um, she's happy to be here. Okay, well, that's she's good. glad she made it. Well, good, good. And then we've got uh, somebody new, Jean. Uh, she has a question. Okay, Jean, with a question. First, she says you're such a cupcake. <laughs> um, Sweet. Okay, then. <laughs> I hate cake. <laughs> 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 Sorry, but I mean, I love that comment. That was a very nice little accolade there, Jean. So I'm not, so thank you for that. But I make these cakes. I'm a cook. People like cake, but I hate cake. I really do hate cake. When I make my chocolate cake and my lemon cake, which I'm very famous for, and also, of course, my cherry cake and my Christmas cake, and all those other cakes that I make, I do like Christmas cake. Uh, but I have to have a taste, and then I just give the rest away. Carolyn's often very happy, aren't yes, you, Carolyn? Yes. When I make cake, and I'll say, "Here you go. Here's the rest." I <laughs> love cake. And she takes it out, <laughs> and she likes cake. So, uh, thank you. Uh, I've never been called a cupcake before. <laughs> She's <you>. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right then. And um, her her question isn't really along the mind power line but okay that's she we said, don't care we'll yeah. have any questions that's all right she's asking about her mom her brother and her dad she says her daughter was born right after they passed and do they have anything to tell me well Jean we don't really do messages on this show because we don't have time and we have so many people we have lots of things to cover and so on however first of all let me just say I'm so sorry that that's a lot of people to lose uh, you know, um, in a short space of time, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Having said that, I absolutely know that they are watching you, that they are watching over you, and I bet you anything you like, I bet my house on it, they have seen your baby, the baby's daughter, they've seen your daughter, they are with you often, and they share your life, and, you know, one day when you... Uh, when it's your turn to go move there and you see them uh, and you'll be able to watch your daughter and watch over your daughter too I, you know I have a daughter and um, we're very very close and the thing that always worried me the most was you know because there's only the two of us um, 
what's going to happen when I'm not here? Because my daughter and I, we speak on the phone at least three or four times a day, at least. She'll call me, how do you make this? And what do you do with that? Or she'll just call me to tell me something. Or I'll call her. And we have always had this uh, strong connection. So I've always worried what's going to happen when I'm not there. And, and there's only her. But then she had my darling grandson. And now I feel better. I can go and know that she has a child of her own, which I think, you know, is huge for her and someone to love her. But I know also that she will miss me. So, you know, we're talking like this. I'm saying to you, make the most of what you've got. You know, make the most of the time you have together. Enjoy the time you have together. And if you've got kids out there who don't give you the time or they ignore you because, hey, you know what? They think they've got all the time in the world and you're always going to be there. So if you've got kids who are complacent, you know, then you need to give them a bit of a shock, you know, Get in their face a bit. Let them know, hey, you know what? I'm here and I'm your mother. Pay attention. Anyway, I'm glad you're watching, Jean. And I know that your family is watching you and watching over you and still a part of your family and joining in with you and your daughter. Yes, do we have anything else here? We've got Joyce just said that she could listen to your soothing advice all day. And then we have Thank a question. You. Uh, so, so please keep calling me Cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Keep calling me Cupcake. <laughs> We've got a question from Serena. She wrote in. Hello, Serena. She says, can you offer any insight on how to commit to a life of making healthy choices to nourish your body? I always start strong and give in to sugar cravings whenever I feel stress or sadness. Oh, boy. Serena. <clears throat> yes. Well, you know, uh, you know, when it comes around to New Year, <coughs> and there we are on New Year's Eve, all of us, we're making all of our, our what do they call our New Year's resolutions. And, uh, you know, we, we all say, oh, we, and this year we're going to do this, and we're going to go there, we're going to do such and such. And on, honestly, I think for most of us, nine times out of ten, those resolutions go out of the window at some point. We might stay strong for a week or two, we might stay strong for a year or two, and then they disappear on us. I think people mostly have trouble with dieting. I'm going to diet. I'm going to lose X amount of pounds. They have trouble with, some people have trouble with drinking. I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm not going to take drugs anymore. I know a lot of people have trouble with, I'm going to be nice this year. <laughs> and then their courage comes out. They just, you know, just somebody says something that sets them off. And then off they go again and they're not nice again um all right yes it's actually a great question because uh you know there are so many people with so many situations i'm leaving my husband this year i'm leaving my wife this year i'm going to start a new life i'm going to sell my house i'm going to do this that and the other and so many of us we have all of these intentions these great intentions to do things and and uh but i always say you know as far as whether it's dieting or leaving your husband or or you know whatever it is that you that you want to do that's hard you're not ready till you're ready if you're not ready to diet if truly inside of your own self you 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 know you're happy to be fat or you're happy to be overweight or if you just you know you're happy to eat those sweets and and forget the consequences then you're just not ready to do it. So if you're not ready, you know, you're not going to do it. Um, if you're not ready to leave your wife or your husband, you're not going to do it until you're ready. You have to be ready, and you have to be ready in your mind here, not only in your heart. You don't just have to talk about it. You have to just and very often make a determination and that's and that's it when you're ready you're ready and often what makes us ready is that there's some kind of catalyst there's something that happens uh we might look in the mirror one day and you've looked in the mirror a dozen times or hundreds of times but you look in this mirror this one day and the reality 
just stares you back in the face and it's so horrifying and that's your catalyst to do something about it the same with anything else <coughs> excuse me that you're trying to decide to do is are there ways are there ways that we can become stronger are there ways that we can carry through that determination there are those ways we can say every day in every way we are going to do whatever it is we're going to do let's say it's dieting but it's easier for some of us than others it's easier for some soul signs than others for instance earth signs we're planners and strategists we've talked about this before we're planners and strategists okay I made a plan to diet I made a plan to diet I made a plan to diet but I'm not ready yet but then one day I was ready and I got my plan and I put it into place and being an earth sign once it's in place I'm going to do it and nothing's going to deter me with fire signs strangely fire signs are driven by their emotions well driven by their emotions we're going to talk about this more next week by the way what drives us and what drives our energy okay but fire signs are such fabulously emotional creatures so they become ready then there's a catalyst that forces them to become ready and through their emotions they'll follow through it's those water signs and those air signs that have trouble making commitments to you know to to follow through on their resolutions and, and on carrying through their decisions and this is why an air sign sort of like floats you know they sort of they go along very nicely they're happy to go along with everyone else of course they have the occasional you know down dip the tornado comes in or whatever but mostly they're kind of you know just happy to just go along so if I'm fat I'm fat and you know hey you know it's okay or hey I'll you know what I'll not eat today but maybe tomorrow I'll start eating again they're sort of nice easy going and water signs whereas air signs float uh, water signs flow and they go along with their nice little stream and of course they can have those whirlpools and those crazy things and you can have floods and overflowing all this bit but mostly they just flow and they go with the time it's only when something maybe a health issue maybe they're told if you don't do this and you're going to pop your clogs maybe that's what will drive an air sign or a water sign but if you are a, what is this lady's name if serena serena if Serena, if you're an air sign or a water sign, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to stick to it. But if it's dieting you're having an issue with, I can help you with dieting simply by saying to you, you remember in my story we were talking about visualization and being and being able to visualize. If you have, for instance, a tumor and you visualize that tumor shrinking, you can make a difference if you visualize your body healing and there are ways to do that and maybe we'll have a healing session I think one of these weeks and I'll show you how to give healing to your body I think that might be a good idea actually don't you think we yes. could do that all right so we can do that so I can show you all how to affect your body and even if you can't for instance cure the cancer if you even if you can't get rid of the tumor altogether this is what's going to happen as you start working in that way your attitude is going to change so instead of being depressed because there's nothing you can do you'll start to feel positive because you are actually now doing something you're taking actions and making a difference but with dieting all right visualize this Every time you put a potato chip in your mouth, it turns to sugar. Did you know that? Every time you put potatoes in your mouth, they turn to sugar. I mean, they literally, within seconds of hitting those juices in your mouth, they become liquid, and it's liquid sugar. So you might like this idea. Visualize a jug filled with liquid, sugary, nasty syrup. You might like that idea. And then visualize tipping it down your throat. And every time you eat a potato chip, that's what you're doing. You're shoving this stuff down your throat. Another way you can help yourself is when you, 
put something on your plate that you know is not good for you it is a poison to you visualize it poisoning your body because that is actually effectively what it's doing and I, I know that this it works for me anyway because I'm I have this weird thing going on with me and kidneys and kidney stones and all the rest of it and I've only got one of those little kidneys uh, so I have to be careful with it and that little kidney has a tumor so I have to be even more careful with it right so I have to watch what I'm eating now the biggest danger to me and my diet is oxalates have you ever heard of them because I never had oxalates are like these little enzymes and they are like a magnet to to uh, calcium do you know how many foods have oxalates in them so many try cabbage try spinach everybody says spinach is healthy for you but it's the most deadly thing for me broccoli is even worse for me nuts I love nuts and can't eat nuts can't eat berries on and on and on now I cheat I have to tell you that I cheat I'll occasionally have very 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 finely ground nuts makes me feel better if I grind them finely I never eat berries anymore and I love them but when I look at these berries if you've ever been in pain a serious pain and you know that if you eat those berries you're going to be in serious pain visualize what is going to happen to you before you put something in your mouth that you know is not good for you visualization visualization techniques I think we're going to have a little lesson on visualization and visualization techniques as far as healing is concerned and maybe that's going to be in the next two or three weeks Carolyn's making some notes here so we're going to have visualization I'm going to teach you how to visualize but if you you know having trouble with food visualize what it's going to do to your body as soon as you put it in your mouth that is an encouragement to stop we have a great question from Dean oh boy hello Dean how are you darling well he's very jealous because Peggy's, because here. Peggy's here you know Dean for those of you who don't know Dean and Peggy have this thing going on between <laughs> they have a say they have a in fact Peggy I think yes yeah, you know to come and say hello to Dean we just get on here come on so this is Peggy say hello Peggy hello hi Dean <laughs> <laughs> all right so sit back Carolyn come on snuggle in so you know so okay three old ladies on the sofa <laughs> just like last week <laughs> right uh, so <laughs> They're not really old, actually, but anyway, it's only me who's old. God. Anyway, <laughs> go on, darling. Yes. You could just call me the baby. How's that? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Won't. We're it not was not, it. It's not, gonna happen. It's not going to happen. Okay. I feel, I feel like I feel like Graham Norton. I've got, I've got the celebrities on the sofa. Do we have the red chair? Can I kick <laughs> someone off on the red chair? Some of you won't even know what I'm talking about, but check out the Graham Norton show because it's so funny and he's so funny go ahead yes Dean what is your question can mind power change what is supposed to happen in our lives oh what a good question yes um it can sometimes there are certain things in our lives this is such a good question there are certain things in our lives um, that are inevitable they just are and no matter what we do, what we say, where we are, where we put ourselves, even if we're to bury ourselves under blankets and live forever under a blanket, these things, the inevitables of life are still going, they're just going to happen. and That's how it is. So there are inevitables. But there are other things that are inevitable only because you've allowed something to happen only because you of your attitude perhaps only because you've been remiss in something so sometimes we create our own future because of the way we're living and what we're doing and so on and so forth for instance you know i've just been talking about food of course you know if you eat the wrong food you're going to be sick is it inevitable that you're going to be sick not necessarily but keep eating that food and 
that's what's going to happen to you. I was uh, doing a consultation with a lady yesterday, lovely lady, and um, her husband, very nice guy, had the weight of the world on his shoulders because he believed that he was a Mr. Fix-It and he could fix anything and everything. And I said to her, you know, keep this up. If he keeps this up, he's going to get sick. It is inevitable if he does this. So the power of the mind, how we drive ourselves, what we do, the decisions we make can affect a lot of the things in our future that don't necessarily need to happen. I think that's where you're going with this, Dean. But <coughs> However, the power of my, the mind is incredible in that even for the inevitables, let's say it is inevitable that the house is going to flood. It's inevitable. Let's say that God decided that that was going to happen, you know, years ago or whatever. It's one of our inevitables. We have choices, right? Our house floods. We can sit in the middle of it all, cry and cry and cry, which of course I would do. Cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and then feel sorry for ourselves and then do nothing about it and then make the situation worse. Or we can sit and cry and cry for a bit. This is me. And then I get up and say, right. And I'd roll up my sleeves and say, right. What are we going to do about this? How can we fix it? There are people who become sick, all right? And, you know, I have a, a, actually a great story. Do we have time for a, another story? We have time. Yes. I'm going to tell this brief story because this true story, uh, my doctor told me about this. He had two patients, both named Mr. Smith. One of them had um, stomach cancer and one of them had a stomach ulcer. Well... The notes got mixed up. And the guy who had the cancer was told he had an ulcer, and the guy who had an ulcer was told he had cancer. So the guy who had the ulcer, who thought it was cancer, went home and immediately put himself to bed and proceeded over the next few months to die. He lost weight. He was in excruciating pain. He became, you know, almost emaciated looking. And then one day the doctor knocked on the door and said, very apologetically said, and this guy is like a week away from dying probably. I'm sorry, you don't have cancer. What he'd done was his mind had, you know, put him in that place of I'm dying. So that's mind power for you. It can affect you negatively. But here's another story that this same doctor told me about a man who, unfortunately, he was a, a single parent he had four kids. There was only him. His wife had died. And so, you know, there was just, just him bringing up the kids. And he went to the doctor and he was told, you know, I'm sorry, you've got cancer. You've got six months to live. And this guy looked at his doctor. He said, I can't die. He said, I've got four kids to deal with. 25 years later, he was still alive. The power of the mind. It's an incredible thing. But if it's inevitable that you're going to die, if once God decides, that's it. When God calls, you don't have a choice. It's going to happen. It's an inevitable. However, your attitude and how you get to that point and what you do with the, the, this life of yours is huge. So the power of the mind can make you miserable and unhappy for the time you have remaining or positive and determined to have the best fun you can and to love the people around you and to show them that you know the love that you have don't underestimate the power of the mind it's the most powerful thing that we have that was given to us god didn't just throw us on this earth i've said this before he didn't just throw us on this earth and say there you go off you go then he actually gave us tools and the most powerful tool he gave us was the power of the mind that you know, we can use to make our lives more negative or more positive. Do we have any other? Actually, Peggy has a great question. Okay. Pe Do you want to ask the question? Pe <laughs> Peggy, would you like to ask a question? I sure would. My question was, how does um, 
mind over um, body power, how can, can that affect someone that is either dealing with um, chronic pain on a daily basis or in a terminal illness situation to help them? Right. Well, you know, um, again, and, and maybe I, I, I answered this a little bit just a minute ago because um, attitude is everything. I see people who have a really lousy stinking attitude, in other words, a really negative attitude, and everything that they do and everything they feel is on the negative. It's, you know, um, the half glass syndrome as opposed to the half full syndrome. If you've got a half glass attitude, then, you know, you're going to look at everything negatively, and therefore everything that you do and feel will be worse. It just will be. If you've got a half glass attitude, then everything you feel and everything you do is going to be on a much more positive level. Now, I know, I know perfectly well, because I've been one of those people in absolute agony over long periods of time. I know that, you know, I remember I was in the hospital with a, a woman who had the worst, one of the worst diseases that I've ever come across, and her bones were crumbling from the inside and digging through her flesh and so she was having to have numerous surgeries over a long period of time and they would file down the bones so that they wouldn't be razor sharp and cut through her that woman was in pain i'm going to say probably 100 percent of the time and you could go and talk to her and chat to her she played cards she played uh, she played solitaire all the time because it was the only thing she could do she didn't have to use too much of her body she would sit on a big cushion that woman was in pain you could see it in her face but that woman smiled and she smiled a lot and she liked people to go and chat to her and she was always willing to talk to you and to chat to you and she was always willing to give positive feedback to you and I mean I was very young at the time she was much much older than I was I was very young at the time in hospital and going through this horrible incredible and painful uh, surgeries and uh, she would talk to me and she would sort of you know be, don't worry darling it'll be okay even though she was in pain it's the attitude that you have you, you maybe can't take the pain away but if you have a good attitude and a positive attitude, despite, and sometimes you have to work really hard to keep that attitude going. And sometimes you fail miserably, but if you keep trying, it will work for you. So if you have a positive attitude, you can, you know, and sort of, it's the mind and mind power again. You can make things so much better. Yes, all right, you're dying. Look, as Peggy said to me yesterday, none of us is going to get out of here alive. We're all going to die. It was very funny, actually. I thought that was very funny. But, you know, if you're dying and you're in pain, of course, it's awful. You're leaving your family behind. You're having to face almost what we feel is the unknown because no matter how much we know, it's still the unknown to some degree. Um, and, yes, it's scary and, and so on. But that doesn't mean that you can't love your family it doesn't mean you can't be kind to them it doesn't mean that you can't use the time you have left to shower them with every ounce of love and positivity that you have you know because and there are people who they you know go to the negative and they cry all the time and they're wasting this the gift of life and I get it. I get why you do it. I'm not, this is not criticism or a judgment. What I'm saying is using the power of the mind and using the power of visualization, which is why I think we shall do definitely do something with this and help people with this because not everyone finds it easy to do it, um, can make this enormous difference to the situations that are going on in our lives. Do we have any other comments, anything else? Because Well, just Joyce says that she thinks the three of us should sing the rainbow song. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> you want the rainbow song? Do we have time for the rainbow song? <laughs> Here's red. Oh, okay, ready? Red. red and yellow and pink and green. I'm sorry, I've got pneumonia here. 
orange and purple and blue. You can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. This is my grandson's song, I teach him the song. Listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes and sing everything you see. You can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. Red and yellow, come on you girls. Pink and green, orange and purple and blue. <laughs> you can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow. Sing a, Sing a rainbow, rainbow too. too. Yay! <laughs> we did it. This is called oh, Rosemary right. Show. It's you called Rosemary Show. Okay, so um, thank you to um, whoever she is here, <laughs> Peggy, for joining us on the show today. Thank you for to, to Carolyn. Uh, thank you for all of you voting or asked your questions and joined us, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you particularly to my spirit guide Gregor. And if you want to contact us, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. We are on Facebook. Check it out for the Healing Minute. Whatever else do we have to say here? Oh, the Soul Sign book. Oh, we're more than halfway through. Yay! We should be maybe by the end of next week. Definitely by the end of this month, you'll be able to get Soul Signs. And that'll be fun because then you can read along as we're discussing it on air how about that for an idea so in the meantime thank you for joining us and please 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 mind power have a blessed blessed day we've got something else to say to you what carolyn next yes. week's show oh next week's show what is soul energy drives you oh yes we're talking about soul science a bit what soul energy drives you now can i say Please, have a blessed day. <laughs>